In this video, we're going to talk about the protist in the supergroup Opisthokonta. One defining characteristic of the protist in the group Opisthokonta is a single posterior flagellum, which produces a pushing motion. And so a flagellum can kind of do this kind of corkscrew movement that helps the protist be able to swim through its environment. And we're going to take a closer look at the two subgroups of coanoflagellates and mesomycetosa. So first we'll take a look at the coanoflagellates. And these are really interesting because they likely have a common ancestor with sponges. And when we talk about simple animals, we will talk about sponges, which are living or living animals. You can see here that the coanoflagellate has this, um, looks like this, and the coanocyte cell from a sponge looks like this. So they look basically the same. Now this might also be a common ancestor with all animals. So sponges are kind of a simple animal that other animals likely evolved from. The coanoflagellates have both unicellular and colonial forms. And one of their defining characteristics is that they have a flagellum surrounded by microvilli. And the um, microvilli, so these are just small cellular extensions. And what they do is they help to increase surface area. And by increasing surface area, it provides more area for nutrients to be absorbed. And the flagellum can either help to move the protist around in its environment, or it can act in a way to kind of create a current to bring food towards the protist. The other subgroup of Opisthokonta includes the mesomycetozoa, and these are primarily parasitic of fish. So most of these types of protists are fish parasites, but at least one of them is known to be a parasite of humans as well.